Salam Marat Cups fam and welcome back to our final Real Talk. Today we're going to talk about the backwards law. So I was doing some research and the backwards law came up and I thought it was an interesting philosophy. So basically it's the idea that the more you pursue something, the less satisfied you are because you're constantly reminding yourself that you lack it. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear your thoughts on that. Do you agree with this philosophy? Do you see it? I think we were actually talking about this not it didn't have the title of backwards law, but it was just the idea of you being content with what, with where you're at now and with your life in general. Mm -hmm. My thing is when I hear philosophies like that, I feel like it's a double-edged sword. Like in one way you should think about it and be grateful for what you have and it like in, increases your gratitude for things. But at, on the other edge, I feel like some people use it as an excuse to not have to continue pursuing things. Mm. You know, like I feel like it depends how you interpret it or what you're talking about when you try to use something. Like that. And that's an interesting point because I feel like this law does highlight being more grateful and content with what you have mm -hmm. than being ambitious. So I feel like it limits your ambition, but mm -hmm. it does make you more like content and satisfied with your current situation. I do feel that most humans have some sort of drive to continue to pursue better and more. I think though when it becomes that that's your overwhelming part of your life, that's when you become more unhappy mm -hmm. and you just focus on what you don't have and that's why this theory would I guess come into play to show you to slow down back off mm -hmm. so that you're more happy with where you are now. Mm -hmm. I think in general in the bigger sphere of like society, I think we live in a society that punishes you if you say that you're content or looks down on you if you say you're content with where you're at and you're not trying to strive for anything else. Mm -hmm. Unless you did reach this very high like mm -hmm. point in life. Yeah, I, I agree that we are a very driven society, kind of. But I don't think it's more like looks down upon you, but I think people are more surprised or taken aback when you don't have a goal. Or like when there isn't something you're actively reaching for, then, unless you reach a certain age. No, but then you're also like, oh, that's that's all you do. You don't yeah. want to do more. So yeah, it is but, kind of looking down on you. But I think that may be... Like, I think people wouldn't think like that if you're reaching for something in a different field. Like, okay, let's say... But you you're did... still reaching something. Like, you're yeah, still exactly. having a goal. Exactly. I think people just like to know that you have a goal. Like, if you stop at a certain level of education, usually people will be like, oh, that's it. Like, you're not trying to pursue something. But if they know, like, there's another part of your life that you're working towards, or, like, there's another goal that you have that's not education-related, I feel like people are still like, oh, okay. Like, you're still doing something. But I don't think that theory just focuses on education. I think it's mm -hmm. just anything in life. But yeah. that's also my issue with this theory because most things in life aren't you don't naturally have or you aren't handed to you. Mm -hmm. That's not handed to you necessarily. So you do have to work for it. Like you're not just born with money. You do have to pursue a job, pursue it sometimes. And usually education is so you can get a job that has a steady income. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can ever just be like, okay, I'm born into this world and that's it. I'm going to be satisfied without ever trying. Right. But I think that's where my point was coming that I think if people don't want to do something on their own like they don't they're only reaching for a higher goal because society tells them they need to reach that higher goal then they'll always feel sad and discontent in the process of achieving that goal but if they had that passion to achieve that goal like yeah there, there'll be some downs but in general that person will be happy trying to achieve it i do think they'll be happy trying to achieve it but i also can see let's say for example you're running you want to make a lot of money and i think that is a reminder that you don't have money which makes you dissatisfied with your current situation. So you're going to constantly keep going and it's a constant reminder that you lack it. Therefore, yeah, but you're not happy. Having money though isn't like a passion project goal that you want to achieve. Some people it is. It's Some people don't really. It, it or could like be maybe fame or... The only driving force is that. I think that's the idea. Yeah. Like for some people money is everything. Not just that. Not just that was just an example. It could be other things like wanting to be loved and then the more not loved you feel or like the more you think about it, the more you feel like you're not wanted or you feel more alone. So it's like in different aspects depending on what that is that you're going after. I think it's also a lot of negative comes with it, not just because you're reminded of what you don't have, 
also the failures that come along with it can also set you back. Mm -hmm. So let's say I try to apply for multiple jobs and I get rejected. Or I have, let's say, a weight loss plan and I feel like, oh, it's not working. Or anything that you guys mentioned. So it's like you also have to deal with the failures that could be overwhelming. I think you should use that philosophy or like the idea of the backwards law to remind you to be grateful for where you are in life. But I don't think you should, it should keep you from trying to accomplish the next thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because every part of the journey is important in some way or like, you know, you learn from every failure, you celebrate every success. Like there's a reason that you go through everything. So I think that law is good in the aspect of being grateful for all the obstacles or like all the failures, all the rejections, but I don't think it should keep you from continuing to try to do better. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's a fair balance when it comes mm -hmm. to that. I also think it helps individuals that are more perfectionist. So always the need to do things and always being successful and always needing to perfect all the things that you do. I feel like if you have or adopt this kind of mindset, it might help you let go of things and focusing on like the here and now and the the not so perfect things that you've created and being okay with that i mean based off this theory people then it would consider people applying for undergrad or graduate school as a negative experience or people working their way up the ladder let's say at work is also negative because it's like you should just be content with where you're at not necessarily. I also think it's saying not focusing on that, you might get it. Like not stressing yourself over it, you'll naturally want to do it. Like it will come to you without <laughs> no. really highlighting. Like I've yeah, right. and never like, applying to grad school, you randomly <laughs> get an acceptance letter in the mail. Like that's that not how that works. <laughs> no, no, not necessarily like that. I think like this uh, theory is more focused on the things that are more abstract and like bigger than like that. love, friendship, happiness. Yeah, mental no. health, like broader than like your day to day like tasks. I can see in the sense where like if you're just looking at happiness, the more and more you try to attain it, that a lot of people are like, oh darn, I did this and it didn't make me happy. That so, means I'm not as happy. So I have to try again to do something to make me happier. I so think, I could see that, but I still don't agree with it. But that philosophy of trying to like the goal being happiness is wrong in itself. Why? Like, because you shouldn't go and try and achieve happiness because why are you unhappy now? I think with each stage of your, like you have some sort of goal, let's say for me it was to become a doctor. I should still find happiness with everything I'm doing mm -hmm. and not just make, okay, I'm unhappy now. I'm going to suck it, suck mm -hmm. it up until I get there and then I will be happy because I feel like people that are thinking the next step they'll be happier they're not gonna actually be happy because they're just so used to that mindset of always being unhappy and ungrateful for where they're at now. I mean, that's the, that that relates to like, if you were never happy without it, you'll never be happy with it. Yeah. You know, like if you couldn't find a way to make it okay or be okay with it at that time, which is kind of what the philosophy mm -hmm. is saying, then even when you do get it, it's not gonna be what you think it is. Like, exactly. It's not gonna be the key to everything that you've been missing. And I think you, you just have unrealistic expectations of yeah. what's to come. And so, I, I just like when you are pursuing graduate school or when you are trying to get a job, you know, and you feel like you're constantly failing or you're being rejected or whatnot, I think it's really important to apply this theory in the sense that you also appreciate everything else that's going on in your life at the mm -hmm. time. Because we're also kind of constantly consumed by one goal, especially I feel like in this like consumer society that we're in. Like we if we're if we have something set in mind, like we just dedicate 110% and all the time to this one thing. And I think that's where that theory can be applied. Like also remember to step back, look at your family, look at your friends, like appreciate what's around you. Cause sometimes even when you do get to that goal and you didn't pay attention to everything around you, you're kind of just like, where did my life go? Where did the time go? Like, you know, that's kind of like what Hoyda was saying. Like you have to appreciate everything around you and every step of the way because there will come a time where those things aren't there anymore. And it's like, was this worth it? Or like, what was actually my happiness? So that's interesting, but like, I feel like what I hear from you is also like, you could pick what you want to focus in on. Like mm -hmm. you have that control and that ability. So if you want to focus on this area, that's up to you. And so like, you could decide to stress over something or you could literally give it up and be content or think of it in a different way that will make you happy. Yeah, because it's, it's so easy to go into a toxic mindset like, 
oh, this isn't working out. Okay, it's just not meant for me. Like I, 100% you hear like the what good and like some things aren't meant for you and whatnot. And I, we believe in that 100%. But I also feel like it's really easy to fall back into like, oh, this isn't working out. It's just not meant for me. Or like, you know, I should just quit. I just find it in, like, I think we need to separate goals with emo or emotions from goals. Mm -hmm. Like the goal shouldn't just be to have this one emotion at all times because that's unrealistic. Like I have a set goal, which is something that I can actively achieve. And then through the course of life, I'm gonna be fit, happy, I'm gonna be sad. I might have times of depression or anxiety. I might have times where I'm feeling like I'm on top of the world. It's just, it's two different things. And even when you achieve that goal, again, you're gonna have times where you're happy, at times when you're sad, times when you're stressed, times when you're not. And it's being human. Like, yeah, like you can't have a goal for an emotion 24 seven. Like expect to feel like your diet, expect to not always wake up at 5.30 a.m. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, that's human. And I feel like we are, we have like, this mindset, like it's an all or nothing, I'm such a failure, and then you just like give up yeah. and like focus in on that like negative thing, how you didn't achieve it, so. Yeah, I feel like everything in life is just that balance. So it's not being, okay, I'm content with life, not gonna strive for anything. And it's not literally consuming my life to go for that goal to the point where I forget everything else in my life. Mm -hmm. Like you can be contented with not being content. I know we said that, but it's more like, I like being ambitious. Being ambitious oh. drives me. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm okay with not being at the place that I'm at. Yeah. Because, but I'm happy also at the place that I'm right now. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like being yeah, able. Where it's like, I'm happy where I'm at, but I'm also happy that I'm not in the place that I want to be because then I always have a goal to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you, you, some people just always like keeping busy. Yeah. And so like not. So in that theory, realizing you don't have something doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're depressed about it or that you're sad about it. It could just mean that you recognize, oh, I don't have this right now, and I want to keep trying to have it. Mm -hmm. And in that trying to have it. I'm happy doing that. Like I'm contented keeping ha like a goal in mind. Like you're yeah. enjoying the pursuit. Yeah. And I do think that we should always have some sort of goal to achieve, whether it's education, family, religion, there's something that we should always mm -hmm. continue to grow in. You can always do better. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that you should always do better because then it insinuates that like you're not good right now, I guess. Not that it's you're not good, but like it's not necessarily better. You're just growing in general. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I like that differentiation, folks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it's like, oh, you're better as in like, oh, it's bad Incident, now, let me yeah. get better, let me get better. No, it's just like, okay, let me learn up more about this. Let me yeah. go into this and see. Like, we're no, we know we're not perfect human beings. We yeah. know there's always something we can improve upon. But why is, like, looking to improve and looking to grow should be looked at as a positive thing instead of a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, why am I not, like, a millionaire already? Why am I not the most educated person in the world already? Like, all those things should be looked at as happy things. Like, because when you stop growing, then life stops being interesting. Like, you have yeah. nothing to live for if you know everything already and you're the most perfect human being and you're... I agree. It does make you, some people do get, I guess, well, upset though if they don't achieve their goal maybe because they're too used to comparing themselves to others so like they see oh this person got a job or got into graduate school and i applied and i didn't mm -hmm. so like then that becomes but that's normal like i don't feel like like not man, i mean i personally can't like not get something that i've been working so hard for and then just be like oh okay it happens like no, no, i'm talking about still that idea, it's fine like, being upset like, yeah that's what i'm saying i'm talking about comparing yourself to others oh yeah then it becomes more of like a, a competition yeah yeah and you become more unhappy i think with this like theory it's not so much it's like many of you were saying about like oh, wanting to be the smartest that might be negative, but I think what it's saying, like, if you accept the fact, the negative part is accepting the fact that, hey, I'm not smart. And that growth, you'll go from there. So switching it up to that question to a negative thing, like, hey, I'm not the smartest. And what will that make you do? Try to become smart by, like, achieving it. But you've already accepted the fact that you're not the smartest, therefore you're not going to be dissatisfied with yourself or your journey. So it's just, like, switching in perspective. Yeah. Like, trying to find the silver lining in it. Yeah. Or just, the uh, like... Yeah, like, like the opposite of that. Like you want to be the smartest, okay, but what's the negative part of that? Well, I don't think I'm smart. So just think, I'm not smart right now, which means I have a lot to grow and learn from. Well, it's not and even so thinking like, like and anything you learn and grow, you'll be happy because you thought you weren't smart in the first place. But <laughs> it's not thinking like, oh, I'm not smart. It's just like, there's a lot to know in the world and I could learn it. 
Like you don't have to necessarily be like, I'm dumb. <laughs> A rock. Well, that's like the extreme. That's like the extreme yeah. example. But it's just thinking about it, like you said, in a in a flip perspective, where there's a lot to learn. I think I hate when people say, "Oh, I know enough about that topic." It's like, okay, I'm sorry, you got your PhD in every field there is to know about the entire world. And I mean, it's so annoying. Uh, actual intellectual people don't think that. Like, if, and you, if you're really, if you really are aware, mm -hmm. then you know like, okay, there's a lot yeah. to learn. The more you learn, the more you know you don't know. Yeah. 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 And I think we've mentioned this multiple times. It's a multiple like, theme <laughs> in our, yeah, in our episodes. But it's just the whole idea that your mental state is your, could be your biggest mm -hmm. hindrance or your biggest power. You know, and I think that just emphasizes it. It's just like the way you think about things. And it's easier said than done, right? Like it's always easier to say like you get rejected or you fail or something and you're just like hop back up and you're ready. That's mm -hmm. obviously not the case. I mean, and it's fine to it's fine to have downtime. Yeah. But it's just the whole idea that you have to get back up eventually. I, like I you have to be ready to come back hard. It's unrealistic to be like, oh, I got rejected and now yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> no. Oh like, well. <laughs> you can be sad, you can cry, and yeah. take a couple days. The issue is when you it, when that failure stops you from continuing mm -hmm. yeah. to pursue. That's yeah, yeah. the issue. It's like, okay, I'm never going to apply again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's where the theory is probably trying to give you a happy medium. Like, accept your failure, understand the failure, and then, like, be able to dust off and, like, go back or be able to come at it from a different way or different perspective. Which is interesting, but it's, it's insane how how strong your mental like yeah. perspective yeah. can have on things. It really is. Yeah. All right, Modern Scouts fam, let us know what you think about this theory. Is this something that you believe is a positive philosophy um, in life, or do you think this is something you'd rather stay away from and just keep a positive mindset? Um, let us know in the comments below. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of The Modern Skeptics.